In this video, I will be talking about code structure, episode of care, and seventh character extensions. This is another introductory video for the new medical coder. Code structure and format, ICD-10-CM. ICD-10-CM codes range from three to seven characters in length. The length is determined by the requirements for each code and typically longer codes contain more detail than shorter codes as each additional character adds more detail to the code description. No matter the code length, a decimal point is always placed after the third character in the code and additional characters are placed after the decimal point. You can add as many additional characters as needed in order to code to the full extent as determined by the ICD-10-CM guidelines. Things to remember. The first character is always a letter. The second character is always a number. Characters three through seven may either be numbers or letters. And all letters of the alphabet are used with the exception of U, which has been reserved for future expansion or updates of the ICD-10-CM code set. Code format. The ICD-10-CM code format is based on a possible length of seven characters total. This does not mean that each code has seven characters, so don't worry. ICD-10-CM codes range from three to seven characters, and the first three characters of an ICD-10-CM code are referred to as the category, as shown in the picture on your screen. Codes that start with the same three characters are within the same category. So for example, category I-11, stands for hypertensive heart disease. So each code that starts with I-11 is a type of hypertensive heart disease. Seventh character extension and episode of care. There are four additional characters that may be added to an ICD-10-CM code after the decimal point. Characters four, five, and six each add further detail to the code description, including the etiology, anatomic site and severity of the condition. These characters have different meanings for each specific code. So it's important to read through each code description and take note of the ways codes change depending on the characters added. Up to four additional characters may be added after the decimal point, each of which provides more detail to the code. The last possible character, in the seventh location is referred to as the seventh character extension. This character is always placed in the seventh and last location, and it usually represents the episode of care for that encounter. The episode of care identifies the patient's place within the care continuum. For example, the episode of care may identify that the patient is still in active treatment status, or is coming in for a subsequent encounter after the active treatment phase has passed. Normally codes that are extended to the seventh character contain a seventh character episode of care identifier. In the majority of cases, the seventh character identifies the episode of care, but there are exceptions to this. In rare instances, the seventh character may be used to identify a detail other than the episode of care such as laterality or fetus in multiple pregnancies. If the seventh character is not added to the code, then it is considered an invalid code and will not be accepted on a claim. A seventh character extension is always placed in the last position, and it's the seventh character of an ICD-10-CM code and includes more information about the condition or the episode of care for that condition. Although the seventh character most commonly identifies the episode of care, it is also used in obstet obstetrics coding and a few other places in the ICD-10-CM codebook. The seventh character may not always be a letter. In obstetric coding, the seventh character may be a number, which is used to identify the fetus in a multiple gestation pregnancy. For certain conditions such as fractures, there may be up to 16 episodes of care possible. But the three most common episodes of care 
are characters A, D, and S. So A stands for initial encounter. This episode of care is used during the active treatment phase of a condition or when the patient is still receiving treatment for a condition. This does not, repeat, this does not mean only the first time the patient is seen. The episode of care letter A may be used multiple times as long as the patient is still receiving active treatment. So for example, if a patient receives wound treatments every day for a complicated wound that requires extensive observation, you could assign the seventh character A. D, this stands for subsequent encounter. This episode of care is used when the patient is seen during the healing phase of the encounter and is no longer receiving active treatment. So for example, when a patient presents for a cast removal after the healing phase of a fracture is completed, D would be assigned to the seventh character. S stands for sequilla. A sequilla is a condition that is the consequence of a previous disease or injury. Sometimes it's referred to as late effect. And this letter should be used when a patient is seen for a complication of the condition after the healing phase has been completed. An example of this would be when a patient has residual pain in their hip after a hip fracture that occurred three years ago. Now we'll go over an example. Sally was bitten by her dog. She goes to the urgent care clinic for cleaning and evaluation of the wound. She is diagnosed with a one centimeter puncture wound without foreign body on the left forearm due to the dog bite. The provider cleaned the wound and placed two stitches, prescribed oral antibiotics and ordered Sally to see her primary care, doc care doctor the next day. As you can see on the right hand side of the screen, this is the tabular. So we've already looked all this up in the index. It's given us the S51 and you can see that the category S51 has a pink box um, in my book. It may be a different color in your book. And it tells you that the appropriate seventh character is to be added to each code from category S51. So for this case, we would assign code S51.832. And it, the picture at the bottom has a red box to the left of that code indicating that we have to assign a seventh character to complete that code. And in this case, that would be A for initial encounter. And that's because the patient is in the active phase of treatment. Example continued. We're gonna fast forward two weeks. Sally presents to her PCP or primary care provider for removal of stitches and evaluation of the healing status of her wound. The PCP examines the wound, which is well, well healed, but has a large scar that has formed at the site of the wound. The PCP removes the two stitches and informs the patient that she no longer needs to be seen for this injury. Once again, the pictures on the right are available for you to view. You can see that we still have the category S51 telling us we have to use one of the following seventh characters. For this example, this case, she's been seen two weeks later, we're still going to assign the same code S51.832. However, we will be changing the seventh character to D because this is a subsequent encounter because she's no longer receiving active treatment for the wound. Example continued. Let's fast forward three months after the initial injury. Sally returns to her PCP because of a large keloid scar that has formed at the initial injury site. The scar is painful and irritating, and Sally would like the scar evaluated to see if there is anything that can be done. Sally is diagnosed with a keloid scar due to the initial dog bite injury. The code is going to remain the same, S51.832. However, we will be assigning S as the seventh character um, to recognize that the patient is coming in for a sequela of the injury. In addition to the code for the initial injury, we are also going to assign a code for the keloid scar. As always, thank you for watching. 
Make sure to hit that subscribe button and let me know if you have any questions.